let's uh let, let's kind of just do a quick recap of the weekend maybe a look ahead to, to next week i think uh the thing everybody wants to talk about you know i i i saw him on saturday um gave my thoughts on him uh, we've got a video up on youtube where it's you know five six minute clip of just just my my thoughts on uh on paul Skeens, but you uh you watched the game as well uh so i mean what are our, what what are our takeaways from Paul Skeen's first three inning outing as a professional? So, um, yeah, uh, that was a uh, pretty, pretty electric. I mean, I guess you can speak to just how electric it was. You were, you were there, but I mean, it was kind of like everything we were, we were hoping for. Right. I mean, I think, I think Nola did bring this up though. After the game on Sunday, we were starting to question just how good like Louisville was. Cause you know, like, I'm sure we'll get to Priester, but like Priester's not known for as a big swing and miss guy. And, and he, uh, he was racking up the swing and misses there. So we started questioning just how good Louisville was. And, and we had kind of had to circle back to schemes to start, but I mean, what he averaged hundred miles an hour with the fastball played really good up in, up in the zone. Got, was it six swing and misses with the, with the fastball um, looked good. Looked exactly what you wanted. Now, I guess the, the next step would be getting to start stretching them out longer. So. Yeah, I think I, I brought that up too. like this Louisville lineup this weekend. Wasn't exactly uh world beaters kind of up and down the lineup. I can't think of too many, like there weren't any real good prospects on there. There were some, some, some four a yeah. guys, right. Yeah. With, with major league experience where like yeah. they're, they're not really good major leaguers, but they're, they're, probably decent I saw, triple a hitters i saw so, her name, perez perez's name on there i was like oh boy <laughs> yeah her, well i think hernan perez was their number three hitter or something like that so yeah like that <laughs> the same. middle of that bats lineup wasn't wasn't all that great um <laughs> but yeah i mean he was electric just just everything you i don't you you couldn't have asked for a better outing out of paul skeens yeah. he was i mean he was perfect perfect through three innings yeah. with with all those swings and misses he he dominated those those guys. So certainly looking forward to uh, to a matchup there. He um, his next start is Friday against Memphis. I haven't really looked into Memphis too much, um, or, or really the Cardinals farm system in general to see if they're really any uh, any better than than uh, than Louisville. But yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be Friday. And what's cool about that game is Pirates game starts at four four twelve four one two. Uh, it'll be over probably by the time that that Skeen starts, so everybody will be able to to catch both games. It, it'll be over for me regardless, because um, I'm on the football. <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah. why we have you on this show here. <laughs> right, right. You watch yeah. the minor league games while all of us watch the the major league games. So, I, I mean, uh, well, mm-hmm. years prior that was that was a good thing most of the time because like I wasn't missing much. Now. Right. Now I might have to prioritize a little bit better. You're just going to need a separate screen. You're going to need another screen. Oh yeah. That means I need a fourth TV now. There you go. In the office. So (laughs) sounds like a very good business proposal. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I I mean, just, he was, he was great. Uh, You you couldn't, you couldn't ask for anything more. You mentioned the, the average fastball being a hundred miles an hour. He hit one Oh one point two. I think is what he topped out at. I, my takeaway coming out of that was just, yeah, I think you want to build them up, but you also like, there's only so many bullets in that gun this year, right? (laughs) I don't know what the number of bullets is, but the pirates have a rough number of how many bullets Paul Skeens has in his, in, in his gun, right? My thought right now is make sure that he's starting every fifth day. But make make sure that those bullets that he has get used in the right spots, right? Uh, that that's I think that's my biggest thing looking forward now is I don't think Paul Skeens could ever make a six inning start in AAA, not one single six inning start in AAA. Like give him this three inning start, maybe give him a four inning start, maybe give him a couple four inning starts. But then once he's able to show you he can go five on five days rest, don't waste any more bullets. Take those bullets that you have and use them against major league hitters at that point. 
that's that's my stance at, at, at you know right now after seeing him. I mean, that's that's fair. And and like I guess one thing you could look at with the scheduling too, and I was kind of thinking about this last night, is you know, with with the way that they had the schedule set up, you know, that they had the six game series and then they're off on Monday. If he's pitching on Friday, we probably won't see him actually pitch on like the four days rest for a couple a couple weeks now. So because like if he's pitching on Friday, that means we're probably still like two or three weeks away from him pitching on a Tuesday, which then he would wrap around again to Sunday. So if you want him to get used to that, I was thinking in my head, maybe like you have him do that maybe twice in the minors, but that may, with how he looked on, on this weekend, that may be too long anyways. But if you really want to get him that full experience and maybe throw him like four or five innings, both those times, just to like, okay, well that checks the final box. That would probably be the best way to do it. Let him go through the, you know, the rotation a couple of times and, and everything like that. Let him do that. Tuesday and Sunday start maybe twice. And then by the time that rolls around, you're, you're like, okay, well, that's late enough in the season. Let's get him up and stretch him out completely. Like you're saying, let him face, let him go start going six, seven, whatever innings in the majors. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. I think that's where I'm at. That, that, that seems like a good plan. I like that plan. Let him do that Tuesday, Saturday, let him do that twice. Mm-hmm. But yeah, don't pitch him like he should never be pitching six innings in a in a minor league game. If there's only so many bullets in that gun, save him. And what it probably be about what what do you do at LSU last year? Like it was like 120, 130, somewhere around, around yeah, that. somewhere around that. Yeah. So what maybe like 150, 160? You probably wouldn't want to go past that this year, right? Which is still so. a solid amount of innings, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean that's yeah. for I mean that's I mean a I'm, season's worth many pirates these days. Like I, Mitch was proud. Mitch clearly past that but i don't think you were really even in the last couple of years you probably didn't have many guys near that in in the majors as is yeah so, oviedo right. last year and keller yeah. that was it yeah so all right well well like i said skeens pitched saturday dominant um you mentioned priester earlier a uh, lot of things quinn priester needs to work on in the minor leagues i think we you know he looked better during spring training than than the end of last year but certainly some things to work on particularly with with the fastball and and just the shape there uh but but i guess go let's let's kind of take an in-depth dive into quinn priester's start on sunday what did you see there like a a lot of strikeouts nine strikeouts and five and two thirds innings i believe is what it was um (laughs) only one hit allowed one run like he he looked dominant against that louisville lineup but yeah i mean kind of what what did we see out of priester on sunday well i I think the first thing that um, kind of stood out and we got like a confirmation after one game, uh, after the game, you mentioned there that the fastball, the shape, the shape looked a lot better on the four seam. Like it, it actually looked like something that'd be a lot more passable at the major league level. Um, he didn't throw it much. He only threw it 10 times, which I think based on the success he had it with last year, that's probably what you want him to, to be around. Um, picked up a couple whiffs with it. He was mainly a sinker slider which I, I think those are his two best pitches. So like if, if I think if you look at his breakdown of his start and you look how he used all his pitches, when he used his pitches, this is the ex- exact blueprint that you're going to want to see from him the rest of the year. And like I said, mainly sinker slider mixed in the curveball too. Um, got up to 96 with, with the fastballs. Um, really solid start. Like I, I like I, numbers aside, I, I, I thought that Quinn, earned a uh, should have earned a rotation spot i mean that it's a whole nother conversation as far as like you know what they wanted to try with you know bailey falter and and maybe like ortiz is the guy following up and so, yeah 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 <laughs> um yeah <laughs> you know, sunday sunday started out as one of those times when i was saying it's like well you know it's a good thing that i'm i'm right. i'm watching this minor league game and you guys can have fun with the the major league one that changed quickly. yeah gee thanks <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but I mean, everything looked looked good. Like, I mean, at this point, I kind of feel like Priester's at the point to where, like, the stuff he needs to work on needs to be worked on at the major league level. Um, You know, better command in the zone, that that kind of stuff. Uh, Facing a major league lineup the second and third time through, all that kind of stuff. He's not really going to work on that in – he's not going to really accomplish that in AAA. But I guess as if you're going to be there, this is what you're going to want to see from him. So, 
Uh, he had like 20 whiffs total. Like I said, he's not a big swing and miss guy. So, so you know, that's why we kind of brought up how good the Louisville lineup is. But, I mean, if he's throwing the sinker, commanding it in the zone, the slider, the slider, it's been incredible watching, you know, because like when he first entered the system, he, it was the curveball. And then he added the slider and just how watch how that's slowly grown into just like his go to out pitch. Mm-hmm. And, and and now to where like he's a actual sinker slider guy. I think he it fits perfectly for the pirates in the back of the rotation. It's just let them do whatever experiment they want to do in, in the majors. Once they get that out of their system, I think Quinn just kind of slides perfectly in in there and we get to actually see if he can make the adjustments to be a major league guy. Yeah. No, great, great stuff. Um, Indianapolis has, like I said, the six game series against Memphis. Uh, and then also Altoona, Greensboro, Bradenton, all open up this week on Friday. So mm-hmm. this weekend will be the first time where pretty much the entire organization is, uh, is playing. So uh, I guess real quick, what, uh, what are you looking most forward to this coming week? I mean, outside the Indianapolis games, but with the other affiliates starting this weekend. I think the thing that will be interesting to kind of see, uh, obviously, Altoona's rotation, even if even though Skeens isn't there, still has a really good uh, potential to be a really good uh, rotation. I think uh, another thing too is Tamar Johnson has been playing a lot of at Pirate City with like the Double A team, so it'll be interesting to see if that's where he gets assigned to. Okay. I don't know where it's something's like, well, we're going to try you here, and then we can always kind of just send you to Greensboro if if we're not liking what we're seeing. But that infield becomes. Uh, even more uh, interesting. Should he make, make the team? Um, really, yeah, I guess if he goes like to Altoona, yeah, I guess if, if, if Termar is in Altoona, then you're looking at Termar there. You're looking at uh, Chang there. And Chang, then you're looking yeah, at Brannigan. Um, and Brannigan. Yeah, it's a nice mm-hmm. little, so nice little Altoona. Yeah, pretty good Looks like, a, like Seth Beer uh, probably is going to start in in AA too. So, I mean, I guess that's a, that's a pretty good – double a infield then at that point he should um, rake <laughs> he yeah, should oh, yeah, rake in yeah, double yeah. a yeah yeah <laughs> so um yeah but double a double a seems like they're even the outfield too potentially has some like fringe guys that can kind of go either way at, at at this point you know if a couple things fall into place then then they're interesting interesting guys at at that point um so yeah yeah, yeah good, really good stuff enough. Well, let, yeah. me, let me ask you this too. So, as the season's yeah. kicking off, who right now is like your dark horse as far as prospects who you're interested in that no one's really talking about that you might see like make this jump this year? So, one guy that like he he just popped up on the on pipelines top thirty for the Pirates, and it's it's a guy that I was um, he probably starts the year in Bradenton again, but I, I, I've been a really big Omar Alfonso guy. Uh, um, Great defensive catcher. They um they really signed him as a like for his bat originally, and he just kind of grown into like a, a really solid catcher. Um, spent some time at first base too, just to keep getting the bat in the line um in the lineup. His for at 19 years old, his exit velocity numbers were were pretty pretty intriguing. He also um chase rate was really strong. The contact rates were really good. There's just a lot of like little pieces there that like, okay, let's get him there over a full season and kind of just see, you know, let's see another year getting older, another uh, little bit stronger and stuff like that. And um, def- definitely a guy that that's been, was interesting to watch, especially late in the season. Okay. Yeah. So, One of the few is. guys in nope. Bradenton who didn't strike out 30% of the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why you attach yourself to him then. <laughs> cool. No, I like that. Um, so yeah, you know, obviously again, like this week, everything's gonna be kicking off. I like I love the segment. Just like Jim said, we talk about it, but like there's no one better than you right now to really talk about this stuff. Uh pick your brain on these guys. Yeah, like that Quinn Priester start too had me thinking. I mean, everyone was talking about Jared Jones, and it's like he had 20 plus whiffs too. And it's like, oh, mm-hmm. Quinn Priester just did that also. So yeah, that's that's got me looking because we watched Bailey Falter have to pitch on Sunday also. So maybe Quinn Priester could like you know maybe get up there and start performing uh, at least better than Bailey Falter. But yeah, caught caught my eye. Um, but like you said, maybe it's just more of the bats than Quinn Priester. We'll find out. 
but at any rate, no, this is awesome. I appreciate all your insight here and talking some po- some uh, Pirates prospects. Yeah, man. Yeah. Go ahead. So nice. Starbucks yeah. on deck. Tell everybody where you they can uh, where they can find you, Murphy. Um, on our, obviously I'm on on Twitter a lot uh, at double underscore Murphy eighty eight. Go to Bucks on Deck Substack. We have three articles generally a day. Um, like a little bit of like a rundown of everything that happened yesterday. Um, you know, like our daily feature and then um, a game day article. If you guys want to come in and just chat about the game and, st- and stuff like that. So good stuff. Good stuff. Great. Great stuff. Yep. Thank you, Murphy. No problem. Man. No problem. Thanks. Thanks for having me. See you next yeah, week. Appreciate you joining. All right, man. Bright all and right. early. <laughs> we'll have more more stuff to talk about next week too. We'll have all four teams yeah, to talk yeah. about. So should be yeah. should be fun. Uh, looking forward Let's to go. it. Look forward. All right, cool, cool. see you, man. All right, all right man.